Hi. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Farm Talk Friday. It's uh, Friday, September 24th, 2021. I'm Ken Jordan. This is my beautiful wife, Janine. Yes. Um, thank you, baby. So you might notice that we're always giggling at the front of our videos, but that's just because, I don't know, we're trying to like, we've noticed on some of the other ones where we're making like weird faces and um, so we're trying to like smile and uh, hold it together so we have like that good first frame yes. and then we, we start laughing. Hi Jane! Hey Jane! Okay, so in farm news. Ooh, this is a big one. We just had a pretty good size guanabana harvested. It's uh, an amazing fruit, also called a soursop. Uh, we've grown bigger. This is a decent size one. Yeah, I didn't even know it was guanabana season. Yeah. And then uh, let me talk about this guy. So this is noni, and I feel like I talked about it before. Oh, okay. But I'll talk about it again. Uh, so noni, like if you go to the supermarket, like Whole Foods, it's um, considered like a, like a superfood. And it's really expensive. It's maybe like $30 for like a, a bottle. Um, these are also things that make me laugh. I'm like, what am I doing with my hands? And how do I show people? Um, okay, so anyways, the noni, uh, I don't know why it's uh, so expensive. Maybe because it's grown in tropical regions like Hawaii and then it has to get imported. Mm -hmm. uh, I have started to try and like ferment it outside in these experiments in jars and they're uh, kind of brown looking. And I think I might have to call my friend Courtney and take pictures and send it to her and ask her um, if I'm doing it right because she's like master brewer. <clears throat> uh, so anyways, but you can also enjoy noni as a fresh beverage. And so we tried that last night for the first time. And I said, hey, Ken, as he was watching football, um, are you ready for your stinky cheese juice? And he said, yeah, because Ken's always into trying things. And it was warm and frothy and smelled like stinky cheese, right? Yeah, and kind of tasted like moldy cheese. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely has a strong taste. And the first time that Ken had ever seen one of these before, we were on a trip to a place called Arenal, um, mm. which is like the most, <laughs> the most um, uh, popular tourist destination in Costa Rica. It's uh, the big volcano and there's hot springs there. And so we had gone to a cute little, not Airbnb, but like a, um, like a boutique hotel and uh, bed and breakfast. And I think this, like this tree was growing in the courtyard and it looks really beautiful. And Ken has this desire to always eat fruit off trees. And he didn't check with me first and he just decided that it looked appetizing and safe and um here we go and uh and so he bit into it and was uh delightfully horrified uh to find out that it was completely different than like what he was expecting it to be so it can be <laughs> chains like yum um hi kathy yeah it it like when it's ripe like this is ripe in that like you pick it when it's yellow um but then you kind of wait for it to get a little bit softer. Um, anyways, I used the soft one for the fresh drink last night because this just seems too hard to blend up right now. So I will probably wait another day and then we'll enjoy another frothy, stinky uh, beverage. And if you're wondering like why we would even do that, uh, I have a lot of joint pain <laughs> and um, this is supposed to help with that. So that's one of the reasons. And then uh, as far as like, like in medical application, if you have like something that was like pussy, and you want to draw out the pus, um, you could take noni and cut it and put it on your arm, wrap it with something and it's supposed to draw things out. So um, it's supposed to be like a super powerful, magical uh, fruit. So I'm really excited that we have um, a tree, um, that is giving us Ken's favorite word, abundance. <laughs> yes, not my favorite word. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Janine posted a little teaser video of um, me carrying 
a chicken through the pool. Yes. Yes. And uh, God, I just can't get that right. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> Super uh, pros. So yes, we went to the vet uh, this week and um, to we took Shakti to the vet to see if he could give us any help, any ideas. Um, because she just, just didn't seem to be improving. You know, her body is so crooked and her leg, yeah. one leg is just so sideways and always in the splits. And, and anyway. she was ruling a lot. So he prescribed some supplements and some special protein food and also some physical therapy. So he said to put her in water and to, you know, kind of pump her legs, you know, to get her legs going straight up and down. So that's what we've been trying to do every couple of days. We put her in the pool and hold her <laughs> and then try to make her, and she's really funny because as I'm pulling down her bad leg, the other one naturally goes on the upstroke. So uh, we hope it's helping and we're gonna keep trying. Yeah, we have her back in the harness again too. Um, so it's been two days and I want to see her in it another few days, but she she was just rolling a lot. Um, I don't know, I don't know why. She'd like walk and then um, she, like she would fall. But the reason why we, we were like, okay, it's really time to bring her to the vet is that she was like doing somersaults, but like side somersaults. A lot, a lot, a lot. Like we had to change the structure of her new um playpen or cage so that the fabric like was um how would you describe that so we were making like there were, there were no corners we removed the corners yeah so that she would like bounce um like off the side i feel like there's children things like this like you make sure kids don't have corners that they can get their neck into especially on a chicken like their necks are super fragile. I mean, I, I think that that's even how some people kill chickens is that, you know, not necessarily to like chopping their neck, but like you can break their neck um, because it, it looks like a fragile area. So it was completely horrifying to find her upside down in the corner doing this, you know, with her head like in like rebar and, and possibly like sharp pointy. It was really scary. So we fixed that. But then we're like, hey, we really need to, we need to fix her. And we're trying so hard. And so I'm, I'm glad that we have some feed, um, even though it's probably GMO. Uh, but at least there's some protein in it. And um, well, no, people should know this, you know, I, I think it's really important that people know that it's hard to be organic in this society. Like we've developed um, you know, modern medicine, and it's, it's not, it's not natural. <laughs> well, corns and everything, especially most animal feeds, so. Yeah. If you get prescribed some protein feed, most likely it's going to have corn, and most likely it's going to be GMO corn. Yeah, so we're not trying to feed her GMO corn, but we needed to, um. Well, we don't know for sure. There's no, no ingredients on this page. <laughs> I think all the corn in Costa Rica is GMO. Like you can't well, find... Well, not the organic corn we buy at the market. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I think pretty much all the corn that you buy and anything that's packaged here is GMO. Okay. As the States is, mostly. Yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, we're not, we're just, we're going to give that to her for a while. We're not going to, we're not worried about eggs coming from Shakti anyway, so um, we're just not giving that feed to the rest of the chickens. That's right. So... All right. Well, I have more things to say. Okay, go ahead. So I, uh, yeah, I posted uh, about Ken doing his thing. And then um, I think I, I posted something a few days ago that said, I'll talk to you about um, shit face Shakti. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you know, that was another catalyst to going to the vet was just like finding her, um, unfortunately, you know, shit face like she had so the, so chickens i have noticed this i haven't looked into it too much but um we're gonna talk about poop so trigger alert you know um but <laughs> they have like mostly their poop looks like uh i don't know like little question marks and um it's kind of 
like grayish and there's always like some white part and it reminds me of really big gecko poop. So I don't know if it's like a, a reptilian slash bird thing. So most of the time it's... I'm sure that everyone knows what gecko poop is. Right. <laughs> some people might not even know what geckos are, but, um, but on the Geico commercials, they have a gecko. And so that guy would, would make little tiny chicken shits. Um, but anyway, so, so chicken poop, I don't know. It seems like it's, you know, either like, like yeah, this anyway, big or that big. And... <laughs> okay. Here. So the point is, is that like maybe once a day they have a different kind of bowel movement where it's like black and it's a smeary mess. And uh, I was, I don't know, we were going out to dinner or something and we bring Shakti right now because we don't have another coop yet. Um, that's all weather. So her and little Poe come into the house at night and we were going out to dinner and I was like, wow, you know, Shakti hasn't had her smear poop yet. And of course we get back and she had her smear poop and had fallen and rolled in it and her face was covered in poop and I just felt so bad for her. And that's when we really knew like, okay, it's time to go to the vet. So, um, so when we went to dinner, she stayed home and got shit faced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit faced Shakti. And then the last thing, um, two last things. More chickens? No, okay. no more chicken stuff. Um, is Wiley Weeds. I said something on one of the posts about Wiley Weeds and I just wanted to tell everyone. So weeds, you know, like, like what is a weed? It's just something that you don't want growing in the spot that you want it in. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, a type of plant. Uh, it just means that there's a plant growing next to something else and uh, maybe you don't want it there because it would be taking nutrients away from that particular plant. So I really want to get away from saying, oh, um, you know, I was told dandelions were weeds when I was young and actually dandelions are super medicinal and you can find them in any urban environment. You can go foraging for them and you don't want them on the path perhaps or right off the path because, um, you know, of dog pee. But, um, but if you find them around, like it, you know, they can be really good, especially the roots. So anyway, um, weeds, I was weeding the garden and uh, we have this nasturtium and I used to grow nasturtium in LA and I even had uh, Alex Polichenko. I had um, helped him with like his first urban garden and I, I was like, nasturtium, so great. It, it tastes like pepper. Um, and they had these really beautiful flowers, but the nasturtium that we have here is non-edible and doesn't have flowers and it just takes over things. So I was out there taking that out. And then I happened to notice like some other plant that looked like my thyme. I was like, hey, wait a minute. And I've noticed this before is that there's these, I don't know how it happens, but they, they like find their way it's like a plant that looks like another plant and somehow they just start growing next to the other one and they're, they're really wily like that. They're like, hey, just sneaking in here. I look just like the other one. Uh, didn't think you would notice. They're really cute. Um, and so, I don't know, I'm just... <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, there's other weeds. <laughs> I can't horrify. Um, where they're just really cute and they have like little cute flowers, like really delicate flowers. And I feel like they do that so that like you go to pull them and then you're like, oh, you are kind of cute. Maybe I'll just let you grow a little bit longer. And then they have time to like have their little seed pods disperse and go around. I don't know. It's just my theory. Okay. Wiley weeds. That's Wiley it. Wiley weeds. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Was there another one? There was, but we could talk about, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, hope's not on, but I'm wearing my Savvy again. Um, Savvy just launched. I'm just going to talk about this for a second. And uh, they just had this conference, and they made this big billboard. It had, like, everybody's names on it. Um, Savvy, so, uh, she didn't say it, but Savvy is some clothes. Yeah, and so I'm wearing my Savvy, and these are, like, the recycled um, plastic bottle pants and uh and usually hope is on and hope uh joined under me so she's under my team and uh yeah 
I, I just wanted to give a little shout out because she'll probably watch this later. Okay. And one last shout out to Phoebe, who was in my yoga class earlier. I'm totally going for this. And she's our neighbor, she's super awesome. And uh, she's a great singer, it's her birthday. Just a shout out to Phoebe. And uh, we did like this, uh, we brought the goddess over to the Momento Oro because it had to be done anyway, but also in celebration of Phoebe's birthday. And so that was some farm news as well. Okay. Okay, now we're done. Okay. All right, <laughs> everyone have a great weekend. See you next week on Farm Talk Friday. Ciao.